Hi everyone, welcome to the Google Marketing Live keynote post show. I'm so happy to be here with y'all. We are live streaming from Google's Bayview campus in Mountain View, California. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Lori Siegel, along with Google's VP Global Product Lead, Jason Spiro. Hi, Lori. Um, that was really fun. That was uh, we're going to spend the next 30 minutes unlocking big announcements, talking through everything that we just heard, and chatting with the team that's behind these products and tools. We're also going to do something that I think is pretty special, is we're going to be talking with new VP and GM of Commerce at Google, Maria Rents. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to all of it. I want to dive deep into what we just heard from the keynote. Really quick, what's the takeaway? So much of this comes back to the three C's that we talked about, customer connections, creative, and confidence. So customer connections, you heard during the keynote, you talked about um, how we're going to use AI to keep up with that really complex customer right. journey. Specifically, we heard about conversational AI, conversational experience in Google Ads, and we heard about updates to Performance Max. Creative, we heard about making it easy. You saw those amazing kind of videos with yeah. the cats um, to create best-in-class um, assets uh, for everyone. And then lastly, confidence. We talked about delivering measurement and insights to help advertisers grow their business in a privacy safe way. And we're gonna have experts with us right now to help us unpack all of this. That's great, I wanna get into it. So as promised, we have live data, the people have spoken. We asked all of you at home to let us know which topic you wanted to hear about first. So based on the poll results, we're gonna start our Q&A section with Performance Max. Now, Performance Max first became available in November 2021, and today Vidya shared some exciting new updates. So Jerry talked about the power pairing of search and Performance Max, and this is truly the best way to maximize conversions across all of Google. And starting today, we are gonna to make this power pairing even better with broad match brand controls. So here to talk about those updates is Tim Frank, the Senior Director of Product Management per, for Performance Max. Welcome, Tim. Great to see you both. Thanks for having me. The people have spoken. We switched the order because folks wanted to hear about Performance Max. Thanks to all the voters. <laughs> I'm excited for that too. So Tim, we've heard a lot about AI today. Taking a step back, how is AI evolving how advertisers work? Well, AI is a huge part of our ads ecosystem. It's one of the reasons advertisers choose Google, is for the responsible application of AI that drives business results. It powers things like broad match, performance max, and so much more. AI is with you at every step of the marketer's journey, from creating campaigns and generating assets, to running campaigns with smart bidding, getting reporting, insights, and recommendations. But using AI doesn't mean you have no control. Your knowledge of your customers and the inputs you provide allow you to guide the AI to drive the best results. I know that was one of the biggest asks that I hear when I'm out with customers, so I want to thank you as we sit here right now for building all of that in. Welcome. I want to take on sort of something that also people are asking about a lot. There's a lot of um, sort of things that people have done, and we're kind of in this shift that we're talking about as kind of hands-on keyboards, shifting toward AI, taking over more of that kind of part of the function. And that's a big one that our partners are particularly interested in. I want to hear how you thought about designing features for Performance Max, understanding how to help advertisers make this shift. Look, this is a big shift. Jason, you know as well as anyone. We all know the marketing playbook is changing. It's nearly impossible to decide where to best spend your next marketing dollar amongst all the possibilities. Yeah. Because this is relatively new, we want to be explicit about the approach we're taking here. We want to understand your business the way that you think about it and deliver marketing performance grounded in your business goals and requirements. And we're thinking about requirements and controls in new ways, not manual controls over tactical layers like keyword management or bidding, but controls that are rooted in your business strategy, things like your ROI thresholds, how you value different customers, your brand story, and more. Keep sharing your use cases and business needs with us, as we know not everyone will be ready at the same time. And Tim, I'd love to get into generative AI specifically. When can advertisers expect to see this in Performance Max to actually help them build out creative? And then going off of that, how are you guys thinking about brand relevance and safety? I know obviously this is something advertisers care about deeply. They do care deeply. Um, creative, one, when done well, really drives performance. 
Today, we're helping you automate the collection of digital assets from your website, integrating with the ways you manage those assets, and generating assets for full breadth inventory coverage and with enough variety and depth to optimize performance. So as we move forward with generative AI, quality matters. So here's a few of the things we're thinking about to make sure that we get it right. Ensuring brand safety and policy compliance, taking a responsible approach to the training data we use in our models, and that generated assets adhere to the best practices of what we've learned performs well. But we offer a guarantee. Whatever comes out of these generated visual assets, you get to review before it goes live to ensure it's rooted and grounded in your marketing strategy. You can expect to see these capabilities rolling out later this year, and we'll partner closely with advertisers in the space to better understand what's needed for their business. I think that guarantee is gonna go a long way because as people build trust with these systems, I think it's a little bit unfamiliar. I wanna to go to another place that I hear a lot, and this is sort of a little bit of maybe a bad term, but a lot of performance advertisers would say that Performance Max maybe feels a little bit like a black box to them. Um, how is your team maybe acknowledging that and then building to help people navigate all of that? It's a great point. Lots of technologies feel like a black box when they're just starting out and unfamiliar, but your marketing budget can't be left to chance. So we try to align the inputs you provide to the outputs we report on. Mm. For example, reporting back on qualified leads or total sales. Performance Max loves a test. So we'll offer easy A-B testing to evaluate your specific results in the future. We know that advertisers want more transparency and insights. This is important to build trust. But it's also useful to learn about your customers for use in other parts of your business. The insights page is your go-to destination. Here you can see our growing portfolio of insights which includes new insights for creative assets and an expanded search term category report. We've heard you and continue to invest in new insights and transparency. I wanna thank you myself because I think that shows a lot of listening. We've been on this journey together and I think that shows a lot of the listening that you and your team have done. Uh, I wanna come back to the idea of customers and some of that reporting that you talked about. We know that not all customers are equally valuable to our marketers' businesses. How's your team building Performance Max to help advertisers reach the most valuable customers? We know that all customers are not valued equally, but the AI can't easily understand that unless you share that information. And after all, you know your customers best. This is where you can bring your own first party data to guide the AI on your behalf. The audience and remarketing strategies of the past will become increasingly challenging with third party cookie deprecation and privacy changes across the industry. You can already tell us who your current customers are so that we can focus on acquiring new ones. But you can supercharge this by telling us which customers are highest value so we can optimize to acquire even more of them. Tim, thank you so much for all the insight and for being here with us. Thanks so much for having me. Now, I want to turn our attention to the conversational experience in Google Ads. During the keynote, we heard quite a bit about this exciting new product. We've been working on a new solution powered by a large language model tuned specifically from ads data to make campaign construction easier than ever for search ads, our new conversational experience in Google Ads. You can have a natural language conversation with Google Ads to help you create keywords and assets that drive better performance. Now joining us to talk about all things AI, you saw him earlier in the keynote, here is Sylvanus Bent, the group product manager for Search Creatives. Welcome, Sylvanus. Hi, Jason. Hey, Lori. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. And Sylvanus, we heard from Jerry about quite a few new AI-powered tools that will be available to advertisers soon. Talk to us a little bit about the inspiration for building the conversational experience in Google Ads. Sure. So for the Google Ads teams, our focus is always on building products that solve problems for advertisers and drive results. And you know, when it comes to using AI, we've been using AI in many of our products for years, things like broad match, smart bidding, and responsive search ads. So then with Gen AI, we look at this as a, it's a new capability for us to solve like really challenging problems. And so when we look at like, what are the use cases, what are the problems marketers are having, uh, one of the key ones we thought this would be a great uh, application of is generating high quality keywords and high quality ads with a lot less effort. Mm. I thought you did a great job in the keynote, so I wanted to Thanks. congratulate you on that in this moment and ask, what are your thoughts about the quality of ads that are being generated by these tools? 
Sure, so quality is critical to everything we do. And there are, there are a lot of dimensions of how you look at quality, right? From a user point of view, it's, is it readable? Is it um, grammatically correct, a coherent message? And for advertisers, quality is also, uh, is this policy compliant? Does it perform relative to the goals that, and our objectives that we have? And uh, is this like grounded in the actual advertiser offering? Yeah. Um, you know, we spoke to advertisers and agencies who are using some other generative tools out there. Uh, and I heard a couple themes, themes like uh, it doesn't understand the context of what would work in an ads campaign. Maybe it doesn't, doesn't understand policies, what would work well. Or sometimes we heard about issues they were having with hallucination, things that are not actually factually grounded. So like all of this are things we take care of and we think about quality. So that's why we're building this directly into the Google Ads platform and into the flow. So it has the context, it understands uh, policies, and it's gonna keep it like grounded in the advertiser's actual offering. And when we saw some like early testing, we do see people are able to get higher ad strength scores with a lot less effort as they like, it's a collaboration type of tool as they collaborate mm. with the AI to generate high quality creatives. Mm. That's really interesting. And uh, one thing Jerry said, he said the goal of building the conversational experience in Google ads was to make campaign construction uh, easier for search ads. So can you walk, walk us through this? How do you see this process making it easier? And how are you seeing advertisers interact with the conversational experience? What do you recommend they do when they first sign on? Sure, so I think it's easier because you literally just start with the URL, right? So with just the URL, the AI does like the first hard work, which is let me try to summarize like what is this URL about? Let me describe a bit about the business, the value prop, uh, and what the car target customer would be. And then the advertiser, you have a chance to like edit that, or if you think there's something missing, you can add in additional value props. And we like, I think what I'd want advertisers to do is first just give it a try. Um, and like really collaborate with this, right? Look at how you can give it a prompt and say, hey, I'm going to want to communicate a message this way. What are some ideas and options? And the tool will give you like suggestions back. You can say, hey, these will look really good. Maybe I don't want to use these other ones. Like it's a collaborative process. You're still in control. And for us, you know, we're, we're really excited to have people actually use it. Give us feedback so that we can like rapidly evolve and just make it better. Hmm. I thought that iterative approach that you just described came across really well in the, in the demo, in the keynote and all of that. What are some of the things that you're most excited about, about this idea of getting into conversational experience in Google Ads? And then maybe, if you're comfortable sharing, what's the rollout plan? Sure, so rollout plan, we're starting testing in July, uh, coming up pretty soon, and then later this year, we'll open it up to a lot more advertisers. Um, you know, what I'm excited about, like first, that more people will be empowered and more confident when creating a search campaign, like, hey, this is a good high quality setup. Like, I, they can focus on their business and their value props, and the Google AI can do the, it's like a partner, right? Someone you can talk to, just like you might ask a colleague for ideas and advice. You can, that collaborative kind of nature while still being able to review all the outputs, making the tweaks and suggestions, that's what I'm like most excited about. And if you think about it, like we're starting with keywords and ad creation, but there are a lot more use cases out there, both in campaign creation and post-campaign construction. So I look at this as a good first step. Um, there are a lot of other things we can explore and, and I'm excited you know, over the coming year and next year as we continue to evolve and uh, with user feedback. So I'm really excited just to get this in people's mm. hands. That pace of learning you're describing is unlike anything that I've ever seen. I, I, I can't wait to see how AI moves the needle in this space. Thanks, I'm really excited. Salinas, thank you so much for being here with us. Great insight, really interesting and couldn't be more relevant. Thanks for having me. Now, I wanna switch gears a bit and talk about privacy and measurement. We have heard quite a bit about instilling confidence in users and also how Google's insights can be a key part of that. This is our moment as an industry to embrace a new era, to rise to increase privacy expectations and to unlock the possibilities of AI. If we get this right, we can build the future of marketing together. We'd love to dive deeper into this, so I want to bring in Kamal Janardan. She is the Senior Director of Product Management Measurement. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Exciting to be here at GML, Laurie and Jason. Yeah. And there are big updates to measurement and privacy. Um, for all the things we heard, if you could have the audience here walk away with two things, what would you share? 
two things come to mind. First, as you know, measurement is a core driver of business results, and it helps you understand how to maximize your return on investment while building that relationship with your customers. The second is that AI is a key tool built on top of measurement to drive those business results. And our hope is that the future of measurement is a coherent, unified set of solutions across analytics, brand, campaigns, with AI built in. And post-GML, I hope that our customers will deploy the products they heard about today, test and optimize them against their current baselines, and of course, most importantly, give us feedback. Mm. Whether they're a brand marketer evaluating their resonance or a marketer measuring customer insight interactions on their site, in either case, we want to hear what they think. And talk to us about that relationship between measurement and AI. What do they have to do with each other? Across the keynotes, you saw that activating quality data means unlocking more accurate measurement. So if you understand how your customers are engaging with your website or your product, then you can effectively connect with them better, build better product. So examples are Google Tag. It helps you collect quality signals, uh, enhance conversions, allows you to activate the data in a privacy safe way, and um, value-based bidding. That is an AI-driven way to truly get the value out of that data. I think there, um, there's so many of these situations where having the measurement in place creates that kind of flywheel. Are there any specific solutions from today in that room right there that stand out for you? Yes, so you heard about them. Uh, the first one I'd say is Product Studio for Retail. Uh, the Performance Max Asset Flows, and of course, I have to say, uh, Google Analytics 4 yeah. to help you view your campaign performance comprehensively. And the transition to GA4 is really a great essential step to embracing AI. We surface those insights and we leverage them to enable those predictive actions to buy, measure, and plan. And the data works for you. So with good, high-quality data, Google AI can truly become that business multiplier. And come on, we've heard a, a bit about Privacy Sandbox from Jerry today. So what is the single most important takeaway for advertisers regarding privacy? I mean, what does this mean for advertisers? Yes, great question. And so Chrome and Android, the goal is to protect user privacy while maintaining the open and accessible internet. That's import important to all of us. So to this end, you'll actually see the industry coming together to support marketing use cases like measurement and audiences. And in measurement, our team is currently testing the privacy sandbox, integrating it into our solutions. And we're also experimenting with new signals like affinity and in-market audiences, which are yielding really interesting results. Mm -hmm. Our aim with all these efforts, as you heard today, is really to build confidence that privacy and performance are not at odds. And growth will continue even after the deprecation of third-party cookies. Mm -hmm. It strikes me that so much of the new solutions that you're building are about sort of using this data, but also about more and that we're making it, you heard today, easier to unlock the value of first-party data on Google and to simplify that, which is something we'd heard a lot. So if we simplify it, is accurate measurement just about ingesting as much data as possible? Yeah, so that is necessary and very important, but it's not sufficient. Um, the fact is people choose brands they trust. And so our ads privacy commitments are really core. They embrace customer choice while enabling marketers to meet those commitments with tools that facilitate it. And an interesting outcome of the current privacy climate is that it has created innovation. Um, the industry isn't just reacting to these constraints and resisting them, it is actually embracing them to innovate. Um, an example of this that you're familiar with, Jason, is around modeling. And that has long been an investment area, but with uh, privacy, we've actually unlocked new scenarios for customers with AI and conversion modeling. And AI and scale are enabling us to scale marketers to move at the speed of their consumers. It's really interesting, Kamal, to hear you talk about this relationship between industry and innovation. So taking a step back, I mean, what does it really mean to build out a responsible data strategy? A data strategy is all about transparency and intentionality. So take our homes, for example. I will confess, I have more clutter in my house than I would <laughs> like to admit to. And we all know that sometimes that diminishes the value of what we do have. So a data strategy is really about having a purpose around how data enters, lives, and leaves the system. And so it starts with consent, giving the user autonomy, having streamlined uh, centralized experiences to create integrity around that consent, and then recognizing that your data solutions must match the type of data that you have. So 
Retail data is not the same as healthcare data. And to do this at scale, you need flexible, simple solutions. And we've heard your feedback loud and clear, and this is a core investment area that gives you the streamlined import and analytics capabilities that allow you, our customer, to focus on activation and growing your business. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Such interesting and obviously relevant insights. Appreciate you having me, thank you. I'm really excited for our final guest. Um, she's a newer member of our leadership team and we're just so happy to have her join us. Um, here to talk about Product Studio and provide her vision for commerce is our new VP and GM of commerce, Maria Rentz. Hey, come on out. Hey, hi, Lori. Hi, so good to see hi, you. Hi, Jason, great to meet you. Uh, Maria, it is so nice to officially welcome you to the GML post show. So many folks have been excited to meet you, and so it's wonderful to actually get to, to see you in real life. So now I know you recently joined Google. Um, you have, I did a bit of digging, you have an extensive background in technology. Uh, you're in front of folks now. What do you want folks to know about you? Yeah, well, first let me say thank you for having me. I'm yeah. so excited to be here. Such great energy here today. I've been in my role now about four months. Uh, so here at Google, I lead shopping and payments. Before joining Google, I was at Amazon for over two decades, building several multi-billion dollar retail categories. And I also spent several years in the startup world at a fintech startup called SoFi. Mm. Uh, fascinating background, and I will say, it's interesting to be here with you because we are at such a pivotal moment in tech, and these themes that we're talking about today could not be more relevant. So. Talk to me about what it was about this moment that made you want to join Google. Sure, I feel really fortunate to be a part of this incredible Google team. I deeply respect Google's mission of supporting the open web and its commitment to users and businesses is inspiring. Over the last few years, I found myself relying on Google more than ever for everything from finding cool new brands to using new features like curbside pickup. And as I thought about all the ways Google had made my shopping experience better. And then the possibilities for the future, I knew I had to join the team. <laughs> I genuinely believe Google is leading the way in transforming commerce, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. I, uh, I, had, I, I knew your background, uh, but I hadn't heard the story about uh, why and how you came to Google, so I, I appreciate you sharing that. I think you of all people are qualified to talk about how the world of retail is changing. So maybe go deep for us on some ways that you've seen e-commerce change over the years. Sure, I mean, I love that shopping is ever changing. It keeps us all on our toes. And so over the past two decades, e-commerce has evolved from simply a transactional shopping experience based on finding, buying, and receiving something quickly to today's world where an online search can quickly turn into a shopping spree. People shop on Google over one billillion times daily. Just say, say, wait, say that number again. One billion times daily. It's a mind-boggling wow. number. So to help people find what they're looking for, we utilize an AI-powered shopping graph, which contains 35 billion listings and connects consumers with products across all of our platforms. We're also seeing shopping experiences are becoming more immersive, really blurring the distinction between content and commerce Consumers are increasingly drawn to shopping experience that are focusing on content such as AR and shoppable videos. Mm. Um, Maria, I have to say, I love fashion and I love technology, so you are speaking my language. I think this <laughs> idea of combining artificial intelligence and, and fashion is fascinating. How is Google making the shopping experience more immersive? Sure. Um, a big part of the team's strategy is making shopping experiences more visual and more immersive. So you'll see more 3D images and AR try-on features in search. And we're seeing a brand new way of search emerge through Google Lens. Today, people use Google Lens for over 12 billion visual searches a month. Lens is really a way that makes the world around us more shoppable. I personally consider it my shopping superpower. <laughs> Besides search, YouTube is where people discover new products from creators they love. So we're working to build out experiences and solutions that make shopping and partnerships on YouTube easy and seamless, from finding an item that you love all the way through checkout. And you've talked about connecting users with retailers. How do you see Google driving success for retailers? We're dedicated to help retailers reach more customers and connect new ways with millions anytime, anywhere. We really want Google to be the best place for retailers to connect and scale their business. 
I want to go back a beat and just something you said a few minutes ago and just say that I am a full-on Google Lens geek. Uh, and so thank you for everything that you're building there. Um, I think you've talked a bunch about sort of this, this uh, sort of offline piece with Google Lens and more. Can you talk about how AI is going to impact online shopping? Sure. If you haven't already heard about AI today, <laughs> if you have been listening, just I mean, we here believe AI is an incredibly powerful business multiplier. And it's even more powerful when you combine Google AI with your data. So everything from rich product details, deals and promotions, loyalty programs, and more. It will allow you to hone in on personalized consumer experiences and drive up user engagement. The perfect example is Shopping Graph, which does the work of connecting shoppers with billions of product listings and helping us surface the right content for shoppers. Mm. So we are only at the beginning of our generative AI uh, adventure. Um, the team is incredibly excited to put powerful creative tools in the hands of retailers and save them both time and money and help them stand out online. You announced the tool and we heard a bunch today about Product Studio. Um, yes. Can you talk about more about how that's going to help retailers? Yes, I'm super excited about Product Studio. You saw Brandy demo it on stage. Um, it couldn't have been easier, right? Um, in case you missed the demo, Product Studio is an AI tool that will allow retailers to quickly and easily generate imagery based on their marketing needs. So whether it's a seasonal campaign or simply experimenting, it's going to help save time and money. And the additional benefit is that retailers will be able to use the newly created assets in their own channels as well. Really create cohesive consumer experiences across Google and your own channel. Again, it's the beginning of the story. It's um, interesting to me because I know we're just getting into summer, but it is not going to be long until we see the pumpkin spice latte at all the coffee shops, right? <laughs> on the main. It feels like a holiday of planning is always just around the corner. What would be your advice for retailers who are preparing for what I assume is just the most important time of the year? Yeah, you're right. Pumpkin spice latte <laughs> does kind of unofficially kick off the That's holiday exactly season, right. doesn't it? In fact, I had a, I read a stat recently that 40% of shoppers regret not starting their holiday shopping earlier, believe it or not. So to prepare for this busy period, retailers should take advantage of the power of AI. I would challenge you, make this the summer of Google AI. <laughs> Get in there, play around with Performance Max, um, Product Studio. There's lots of time, now is the perfect time to experiment with these really powerful AI tools and make any necessary adjustments to your campaigns to ensure you're op optimized for the holiday season. Additionally, today we introduced Merchant Center Next, and that's going to simplify how retailers showcase their products on Google. It's a great opportunity if you're not yet on that platform. Um, I love the idea of using this summer to sort of get ready with some of these new tools. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the ways, one thing they might want to do to get ready is to stand out. Can you talk about some ways that retailers can stand out with these tools? Sure. I mean, businesses are always looking at how they can stand out, and the best way to do that is by sharing with customers all the information they need, such as product details, special offers, shipping and return policies are really meaningful to customers, loyalty programs, and reviews. You want to make sure you list all this information in Merchant Center so you can sure it shows up in Google where everyone can see it and together we can drive more clicks. And one other useful piece of advice is that there are a number of great reports in Merchant Center that help retailers decide about price and assortment. For example, retailers can review whether their products are priced competitively, which products appear next to theirs, and even how shoppers engage with their local business on search and maps. And we're constantly updating and putting more data and reports in Merchant Center, so you really want to check it out. Maria, thank you so much. And I want to say, as I said at the top, welcome to Google. We're all so happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll say before we close, I cannot help but turn the tables on my co-host here. Ready for the hot seat? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, I did some digging on you too. You've been at Google for 13 years, so you obviously have some great insight. Now, over a decade ago, you were at Google at the forefront of transforming mobile advertising. And I saw something you wrote about that time period. And you wanted to help people communicate the importance of mobile advertising. And you wrote, we started with an empty whiteboard and the goal of telling a story. So here we go again. We are on the cusp of what feels like such an extraordinary moment led by advances in AI. Your message to advertisers a decade ago was go mobile. So now you're here. What is the message to advertisers? What's on the, uh, the empty whiteboard now? Mm. 
I think the idea that we tried to capture, and I think it's, it's sort of um, a nice uh, bookend, is that that was the first GML that we're talking about 10 years ago. Right. Uh, and that was a similar moment of disruption. And so recognizing that we're in a disruptive moment, but not letting that paralyze a, an organization or a brand was at the center of this. And so, um, of course, there's rapid learning. But I think what the idea behind the empty whiteboard was, was to start with that empty whiteboard and fill that up. Fill that up with hypotheses about how your relationship with your consumers changes. Fill that up with sort of theories about which products might help you achieve that. Fill it up with questions about how some of the disruptive technologies might change your marketing and your business. And then leverage everyone around you who has some learnings and experts. And of course, Google wants to help with that. And so I think at the core of the moment in mobile and now at the core of the moment in AI was about recognizing and acknowledging disruption, but embracing all that comes with that. I love this idea of not being paralyzed by disruption and experimentation. So Jason, thank you. It's so wonderful to be able to be here and be your co-host. And thank you to everyone who stayed with us for the Google Marketing Live keynote post show. And with that, we've come to the end of GML 2023, but I will say there's plenty more information waiting for you on the GML site at googlemarketinglive.com. I would say now is the perfect time to head over there and explore the video on demand series, TLDR ads, news, and how to's. Lori, I want to thank you both for making this easy and, and, and fun for me and helping bring this show to life and maybe be the first to invite you back Love for it. next year for GML 2020. You heard it here. <laughs> and, and to all of you, we'll see you next year at Google Marketing Live 2024.